So last week, <clears throat> we learned about king of Israel. So who was the king? Who was the first king of the northern king? Jeroboam, that's right. Yeah. Oh. Today's word of is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. Anybody remember what is the theological terms of the word? Yes. Trinity. Good job. Yes. Woo. <laughs> so today's word of is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. So when I just pointing out this team. Group A, right? And every time when you're just pointing out, what up? You guys just say, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. And then at the end, you say, awesome. All right? And the group B, you guys are going to say, when I'm just pointing it to you, you say, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. Fantastic. Got it? Okay, let's practice. What is today's what up? Doesn't sound like a really fantastic. <laughs> Let's just make a you know really <laughs> exciting mood, and <laughs> you can just make it fantastic. Okay, so if if you just give me how response to me, you can get the more point. Okay, let's do one more time. What is today's what up? Awesome. That's right. So today's uh, memory verse is the same as the last time. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5. Uh, I think last time, you most of them rem memorized this verse, right? So who can recite? Do you want to, who wants to try? Yes. Okay, all together. One, two, three. Listen, Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. The love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5. Okay, everybody stand up. Everybody stand up, and then our praise team, you practice, right? Good job, thank you. So, Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5 is a very important verse that you have to remember. It's the last time we talk about direction, right? Why do we need to direction? To go to your friend's house. If you don't know, if you don't have a direction, you cannot go, right? So direction is very important. And why do we need to have a Bible? Because there's many choices every day. You're making choices. And to make the right choices, we need to have a guidance, direction, right? So the God's word is our direction to make the right choices, to please God. So last week, talk about, we learned about the king of Israel, Zerubbabel. But he wasn't really, he wasn't good king. And he led the people into the sin by worshiping the golden calves. He didn't want the people uh, returning to Jerusalem to worship God and the temple. So he made a wrong choice, right? So let's just review. So northern part was in charge of the king of Jeroboam, and then southern part was uh, Rehoboam. And uh, the Jeroboam was uh, afraid of losing his authority and power and his people. If his people travel to Jerusalem, right? Yeah, Jerusalem is right here in the southern part. That's why he didn't want his people go back to Jerusalem um, to worship God in the temple. That's why he made a he made a golden statue, and he told a lie to people. Yes, so that they can just stay and. Uh, 
it remained their country and not to trouble, go back to the Jerusalem to worship God. He made a shrine and first uh, celebration so that people can, be, people can believe that Israel is better than Judah. So that was a, basically he made a wrong choice. He led the people um, that got into the sin. What is uh, our what up? Fantastic, that's right. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> God is fantastic. Trinity, yes. So Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel for 22 years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, he did evil in the sight of the Lord. So he did another evil things continuously after Jeroboam. And he married, he married the Jezebel, the, the daughter of the king of Estonia. So she wasn't, she was a Gentile, actually. She didn't know God, and she uh, served the bar and worshiped bar, so idol. And then they married. So um, that, that is a basically made a big mistake that uh, he married the wrong person who worshiped idol. That's all the people idolized rather than God. Yes. And then guess what? Who came to see? <laughs> Prophet Eliza. So today, was, uh, today we are going to learn about how uh, the Prophet Eliza stood up to the evil king Ahab. What was the king's name? Ahab. Eliza challenged the prophet of the first uh, God bar to send down fire from the heaven. All right? So this is the things that, uh, the picture that, so Eliza was the one to see King Ahab, and he told, he told, he just delivered a message that there will be no rain and famine for three years. How many years? Three, three years, not three days, or not just one week or one month. Three years. So people's gonna have a difficult time. Okay. So three years, after three years, so you have to remember, it was a God's time that God just appointed Eliza go to see King Ahab. He didn't just go. Yeah, he, it's like a middle of the prayer. He felt like, oh, I need to see King Ahab. It was not. God spoke to him to go see Ahab, King Ahab and tell him there's going to be no rain and famine for two, uh, three years. All right? And after that, actually, the King Ahab and then uh, Zerzabel, the queen, they both of them uh, made a wrong story, not true story, after they got to receive from the uh, message from the uh, prophet Eliza. They just uh, told, the, uh, told the light to people that prophet Eliza uh, came to, uh, told us that we're going to have a new rain and famine. The made people believe that uh, the worship bar instead of God. That was the main reason, but they told the light. The people believe that prophet Eliza came to told us that there was no rain and no food for three years. Yeah. And uh, he was uh, hiding. Um, because the King Ahab and Jezebel made the wrong story to the people, so they just believed that uh, the prophet Eliza was the one who caused the problem, but he was not. So he, uh, three years, uh, he's been struggling, praying faithfully, but uh, he just served the Lord, no matter what people are saying about. Yes, and then that was another God's time came, and God appointed him to go back. Now, you need to go back and tell them, we're going to have a com challenging a competition time that gathered together at the uh, mountain of Kamel. And we'll just, uh, he said that God will just prove that God is a real God. All right? And then King Ahab was all agree, so they gathered together. So the Jezebel and Ahab, they brought the whole bunch of uh, the prophet of Bar, who was a serving Bar. And um, the prophet Eliza was there, was there too. All right. And then he says, let's make an altar. So at that time, actually, Eliza was, was saying that we need to make a decision. We need to make a, uh, make a, make up our mind to towards, turn around from the your way and come back to the Lord. He was uh, saying that. Yeah, but they didn't really listen. And he said, Okay, we're gonna make altar, and then we'll just ask uh, without fire. 
So this one, here's the whole thing. But this time, there will be two altar. One is for Baal, one is for the Lord from the, with the prophet Eliza. And another group is for the fourth God, Baal, and we're going to ask, uh, ask them, who's going to send the real fire for the altar? All right? So whoever sends the fire, then that uh, God is be true God. Yeah. There was a, um, I think uh, Eliza was uh, asked them to just go ahead. And they were dancing, and even they were just uh, hurting themselves to show the, um, the blood. And they just desperately asking, asking for fire from the heaven. But do you think really bar can sustain the fire? Yeah. And this tip, what is our today's water? Water, 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 water. Yeah. yeah, only awesome, can, awesome God can just make a fire from the heaven. So. The prophet of a bar, they just dancing and whatever they did it, they didn't work it out. And, and prophet Elijah said, maybe your God is busy, Baal is busy, maybe he's sleeping. Right. <laughs> and then at this time is for the history. And from the Bible, I'm going to just read it to you, okay? This is a real story from the Bible. First King 18, um, 36. So, and at the time of the offering of the Operation Eliza the prophet came near and said, Oh Lord, he was praying, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant, and that I have done I have done all these things in your word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have a ton their hearts back. So basically he was uh, praying for that. Why don't you just prove, Lord God, prove you are the true God so that everyone can turn around from the, their way towards your way. That was uh, his prayer. And then what happened? Right away, the fire, the God sent the fire from the heaven. And then every altar, oh, before that, the important things I forgot. Yeah, this person is, his servant was uh, carrying the uh, jar of the water, right? And yeah, he, he asked him to pour over the water, altar, four times. So he just brought the water, the four jar of the water, full of the water, pour onto the altar. And then you read the Bible. And then there is a hole too. He, he made it. And then everything was a stock and wet. When we have a fire, what do we need? Yes. We need water, right? <laughs> yeah, but this altar, the top of that, there is a sacrifice animals on the top of that, but everything is wet. The water, right? Yeah. How many times uh, he poured over top of the altar? Four times, four times. Yeah, everything was just up and wet. But God is awesome, pa fantastic, right? That's why right. he made it. The fire from the, he stand the fire from the heaven, and everything is done. Everything is uh, uh, gone. And he lay down and he just prayed to the Lord for rain. And then also, finally, after three years later, God proved that he is a true God, and then we have a fire, uh, rain too. Okay, so we'll just wrap it up from the our video. <clears throat> At the time of the King Ahab, the people were divided. Some followed King Ahab in a worshiping for God, and while over, while other were like Eliza and remaining faithful to God. Remember what is the idolatry? Let me see. Anybody remember? What is adultery? Adultery is a sin, the heart in which we love and value something else. God. So often the idols we have today are things like a video game. So who love to do the video games? Raise your hand. Love. Do you love? Do you love a video game more than God? You don't have to answer me. Who has a many great 
toys. Raise your hand, everybody. And do you love your toys more than God? You don't have to answer. How about money? Do you love money? Money is necessary. We need it. But if you really love, if you love to have money more than God, it's an idol. It's an idolatry too. It's an idol. So when these things become idols in your hearts, they can also cause division between us and other people we love. Have you ever had a toy that you love a lot and you don't want to share? Have you ever had that kind of experience? When you got a new thing, new clothes, and you don't want to share with your brothers or your sisters, and your, uh, when you have a new toy, so you don't want to share with your brother or sister. Was it hard to share it with your brother or sister? Answer, but think about it. <laughs> and something is an idol if you love it more than God. Okay? And so right now, we're just, you know, having worship together. And you just sit down, and you're just thinking about your head is, and thinking about other things. If you just focus, and maybe, maybe just look at me, but your head was thinking other things. I don't know. God knows. Where's your heart? God is looking for heart. Even you're physically, you're here, but you're thinking about other things. Hmm, after Sunday school, or Maybe what should I do, and what kind of game do I need to play? Or well, so something like if you just you know planning in your head, afternoon schedule, not just the listening, focus on listening, but the words of God from the worship. That's an idol too. So why is sin cause wrongness in our relationship? See, if you don't listen, if you don't pay attention, if you're just poking each other, and if you just you know uh, without without saying anything, you're just looking at each other, doing something, it really hurts my feeling too. But God knows what you guys are doing. So it is also true that when we trust in Jesus, and God knows, Jesus knows your heart, He just brings us back to the Lord. Even you love something, but God will. Jesus reminds you, you need to go back to the Lord. So God gave us the peace with one another people. Like if you just, you know, ah, oh, you're just thinking about, and you're just looking at each other, smiling, but you just fix your, um, your behavior and focus on me, I don't get hurt. <laughs> but if you, st if you keep doing that, it hurts my feeling too. Brokenness, broken relationship. So when we confess our sin, repent, turn around from the your way towards God's way. That's a repent. Come back to the God, and He is faithful too, and He forgives you. So Jesus restored brokenness between us and God. We call this as a reconciliation. Reconciliation is a really good word that, because of sin, we had a separation between God and us. But we had a reconciliation through, through Jesus. Jesus reconciles us with God so we can be close to Him again. Because of sin, God is there, but we were apart because of our sin. But Jesus brought us back to be close to the Lord, and we can be together. And Jesus also gives us a peace with one another. He helps us love God more than anything else. And when you keep, when you keep God at the center of your lives and follow Him, He helps us love people and around us, around us too. So from this, today's story, Elijah told the people they had to choose whom they were going to worship, either Baal, Bar, or the one true God. From the story, you found out they surrendered at the end, right? Yeah, Bar, Baal didn't answer. They prayed, singing, dancing, they did everything, but there's no answer because Bar was not true God. But all true God, when Eliza prayed to the Lord, he answered right away. Yes, even the altar was soaking away. Everything was wet with water. But he proved that he is a true, uh, powerful God. What was our water today? You forgot?
Fantastic. That's right. So, so do you remember in which book of the Bible our key passage today's memory verse is found? Deuteronomy six four and five. Okay, let's read that one more time all together. Listen, Israel, the Lord of our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Deuteronomy six four and five. Okay, that is the Bible address. Don't forget. So that's right. So Deuteronomy. In this book, God's people were preparing to enter the Promised Land, and God wanted to show them how life works best. So He wanted them to trust in Him, love Him more than anything else. God wants what is best for us, and He knows He knows that loving Him is the best things we can do. So when we trust and follow Him, He will bless us and lead us into abundant life. So I'm so proud of all of you guys uh, working on our challenge this week. We all want to grow in closer to God. Doing biweekly challenge are a great way of, way for us to grow in the faith and worship God every day. And top of that, we're gonna read the Bible. So during the Sunday school, the teacher will be explained to you. So from the Monday, so you will start reading the Bible. Not the whole book, so one chapter from the first beginning of the John, uh, first John from the first John at the back of the um, Bible, New Testament, the first John from the chapter one, and you're gonna start. You're gonna read it, and then you check mark, and then at the end of the month, you're gonna um, you're gonna bring the the paper back to show us that you uh, you cannot just you know falsely check. But every day, sincerely, if you just read it, you check, you work down, and then you can just bring to us, and you will get the some prize as well. And also, plus family worship, family worship, okay? So family worship is what once a week, but Bible is every day. Remember, Pastor Joyce was advertised that no food, no Bible, no food, right? No Bible, no food. So continuously, we will follow that. If you don't read the Bible, no. uh, the make a promise is is a between God and you. You just jot down when you're gonna read it. So before the meal or after meal or before lunch, before dinner, it's up to you. All right. So if you just read the Bible every day and then once a week, family worship combined all together. And if you just bring back the wall, just you know, give you a paper that you can sign. And with your parents sign because it, this is involved the family worship involved. So family and you, you have to, as a team, you have to do it together with your mom and daddy. Okay? Yes. Okay. And then I do have a question from the kids. I got it. <laughs> Hi there. What is today's what up? This team. Awesome. Thank you. So do we have a prophet in these days? No. No. Why not? Then who's going to deliver the message uh, from God to you? Yes, Sean. Awesome. That's right. Because God speaks through Bible and God speaks to us directly. That's right. Uh, but from the today's story, the Eliza prayed, asking God to hear him and answer his prayer. So these people will know that you Lord, you are God, and that you are turning and that they are turning their hearts back back again. So he was a desperately, actually not for him, but he prayed for other people, right? So when Eliza prayed, God answered, and then people bow down and worship him. They realized that he is the one true God. Um, and Bar, whom uh, had been worshiping, was a worthless idol. If you really love to do game whole day, that is idol too. 
And if you want to just play, play day, every day, you want to have a play day every day with your friends, that means your friend is idle too. And if you love your money, yeah, that is idle. If you love more than God, that's everything is, everything is idle. And God is merciful and forgives us when you make a mistake, even you are a Christian. Come to church and you just believe God, believe Jesus, but we are not perfect, we sin, right? Yes. You try to be perfect, but no one is perfect. Even your parents, even teachers, even me, I am not. So whenever we make a mistake, what do we need to do? We confess, yes, we pray to the Lord, confess our sin. Confessing for part is very important. Without saying sorry, you cannot confess your sin. You have to say sorry, ba ba ba, what you have done. You just confess your sin to the Lord and then asking forgiveness, God will forgive our sin. He is merciful, He is love. He wants, he wants to restore us to bring back to Himself and bless us. That is the main, uh, His purpose that He gave us the gospel and we can get back to him. And uh, we don't have to fear God's judgment against the sin when we give our lives to God and honor him. So whenever we just make a mistake, we, when you do sin, even if um, you're a Christian, you come to church, but daily we do sin too, then you need to confess and you, you need to pray to the Lord. According to First John 4, 9, if we confess, confess I'll just read it to you. First John 1 John 1.9, it says, If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So this is God's promise. No one is perfect. That's why we need to confess our sin. We need to repent, turn around from the own your way towards God's way. And you pray to the Lord, ask Him forgiveness. Okay, let's pray, and I'll give you five minutes of recess, and we're going to do review game. Review question. Okay, let's pray. Shh. God, thank you for speaking to us through your word. You are powerful and glorious, and we want to show you reverence and worship for all that you have done. Thank you for loving us so much that you would send your only son Jesus to die for our sin and be raised to life so that we can, we can live forever with you. Please forgive us for the idols we have made in our lives and help us to love you more than anything else. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.